All right, let's break down the Joker fa fa la 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 trailer, and then we'll set the betting odds for what might happen in this movie. And we'll make a little game out of things too. So, break out the habaneros, let's get after it. Hey Fleck, you got a joke for us today? All right, so we're starting with Arthur Fleck in prison. Well, Arkham Asylum. Back in 2019, a bunch of people theorized that the events of the first movie may have all just been part of a hallucination Arthur had in Arkham Asylum. I think this trailer strongly suggests that's not the case. That'll become clear later. Okay, so we're getting a much different interpretation of Harley Quinn in this movie. She's not the Joker's psychiatrist, she's already a patient in Arkham Asylum. Maybe part of a sort of choir for patients here. And we're going to get more on Harley in this trailer than we get of Arthur. We use music to make us whole, to balance the fractures within ourselves. Continuing the thematic element from the first movie of using expressive art to liberate Arthur. Dancing accompanied the progressive loss of his inhibitions, coinciding with his further descent into insanity. It's this perverse notion that the less hinged Arthur's mind is, the freer he feels. So this movie will bring the addition of another art, as he expresses himself in music. What will be the effect of music or singing on Arthur? Will it correlate to even more insanity? Will it possibly help to regulate him? Or will it simply signify his discovery of his counterpart in Harley Quinn? the way a dance requires a song to be complete. I'm nobody. I haven't done anything with my life like you have. So Harley is a direct mirror to Joker. She's walking up the same steps. She's making the same finger gun joke. She says she's nobody. The same mindset Arthur had in the first movie. I said, for my whole life, I didn't know if I even really existed. And Harley's obviously insane. I wonder if her path had crossed with Arthur without him knowing. Like, maybe she was one of his other neighbors. Or maybe she became a fanatic and learned all she could about him. She may have intentionally gotten herself admitted to Arkham to try and find Arthur. That's why I think this is evidence the events of the first movie did happen. Because Harley knows Arthur. Unless they're really just following this all the way through and nothing that happens in any movie with Joaquin Phoenix's Joker actually happens. And I think that's incorrect. So is this going to be a musical? Like a legit musical with actual performances, not just with music as a focal point? I imagine so, since they cast Lady Gaga, who was pretty great in A Star Is Born. Now, To me, that sounds like a wild notion, having the Joker singing in his movie, but I'm in no position to question Todd Phillips after he made the first movie, so let's see it. Surprise me. Let's get out of here. So the two of them are outside of Arkham. Arthur killed at least seven people, if you assume the psychiatrist he ended up with bloody shoes from died. So, I doubt they would release him. Did he escape? The other possibility is that they're both imagining this inside Arkham Asylum. The term folia de, I don't know if I'm saying that right, I don't speak French, I'm not a rifle dropping surrender monkey, but that term means a delusion shared by two people. So perhaps this is all a hallucination they've concocted for themselves inside Arkham. Or it represents Arthur's finding of his insane counterpart and the combined havoc they cause. There's definitely more than one way to understand the title. Now, I love music, and I love trying to understand why specific songs are used in movies and trailers. This is a male cover of What the World Needs Now, originally sung by Jackie DeShannon. It's been used in tons of shows and movies. It was released in 1965, right smack dab in the middle of the Vietnam War, during the Make Love Not War hippie era. 
What the world needs now is love, sweet love. It's the only thing there's too little love. It's pretty standard boilerplate lyrics for calls for peace from this era, but these lyrics could certainly be perverted. Lord, we don't need another meadow. There are plenty of oceans and cornfields and sudden beds. There's room to morph those lyrics into a condemnation of the upper class's creation of new things, businesses, materialist problems, politicians, as Arthur, who became an icon in the last movie, could declare war against the status quo and put his and Harley's love on display, claiming a shared insanity is all you need while the system burns down around them. It's the only thing that oh, Joker running from others dressed up as clowns. Maybe they're undercover cops? Maybe he's lost the support of his followers? I don't really know what to make of this. I have no idea how he would get a venue to perform if he's a wanted Arkham Asylum escapee. Maybe his following grows so great they're able to keep the authorities out? I don't know, I'm lost on this. Which is just fine for me on a trailer. So Arthur gets dragged away and they end up in a courthouse surrounded by, I guess, fans. I don't want to speculate until I've got a concrete prediction to make about the plot. Tell us, what's changed, Arthur? I'll tell you what's changed. I'm not alone anymore. Okay, so I've got a concrete prediction to make about the plot. He's being interviewed in what looks like a TV format here. Perhaps he was released from Arkham under the misconception that he had been reformed. Then he was put in front of a camera, maybe to either promote the good of Arkham Asylum and the work it does, or to be used as a pawn to try and quell the chaos being caused by his supporters. Perhaps he came to be used as the model for rehabilitation and got a show out of it. Then Harley convinces him after a period of time to fall back into his insanity and then everything goes off the rails. I'll submit that as my prediction for the plot of this movie, and recognize that it's almost definitely not even close to correct. That's what we should be talking about. Yeah, I'm guessing this is sort of his advocacy for mental health assistance that he was eventually denied in the last movie. That's my call. And I'll be wrong. I, I kind of hope I am. I hope this movie hits me with something good that I never saw coming. And that's Harley unleashing the Joker from Arthur Fleck. I'm calling it with completely unfounded confidence because that's what the internet is all about. All right, well, I hope Joker wasn't a fluke and Todd Phillips and Scott Silver can follow it up with a worthy sequel. If it's anywhere close to as good as the first one, I'll be happy. But let's get to the reason all my fellow gambling addicts are here. Let's set some betting odds for this movie. And we're making a game out of it. I'll make the bet slip, and you're all given 100 sauce bucks. Put in the comments how you want to allocate that money, and when the movie comes out, I'll give a little nod to whoever ended up making the most money. Now, setting these will be a lot tougher than it was for The Acolyte, because this is being made by not Disney, but I'll do my best. Alright, what kind of bets should we set for this? Let's start with Arthur's fate. Will Arthur die? Those odds will be set at plus 480 yes, minus 590 no. I think eventually Todd Phillips will end Arthur's story with his death. So the real bet here is really will this be the last movie? And I figure there's got to be a third one with how successful it's been. And let's be real, studios want to make money. And let's also be real, it's not like DC has a whole lot of other things going for it right now. Will Joker escape Arkham or be released? We'll go plus 120 he escapes, minus 140 he gets released. Next, are the events of this movie actually happening, or is it all truly one shared delusion between Joker and Harley? I'm setting this at minus 520 that it's real, plus 430 that it's a shared delusion. But the caveat here is that it must be confirmed in the film that it's all a delusion, so keep that in mind. Will Bruce Wayne make an appearance in this movie like he did in the first one? I think this is even odds, so we're setting it at minus 110 either way. How many confirmed kills will Joker have in this movie? For frame of reference, the first movie he had 7. This time, the over-under is set at 5.5, because I think Harley will take some. 
And if you're not aware how over-unders work, if you bet the over, that means you think Joker will kill at least six people. Again, minus 110 for both. Also, do you think Arthur or Harley will kill more people in this movie? I actually think Harley is going to be crazier than Arthur, so we'll say minus 108 for Arthur, minus 112 for Harley. How many different songs will be performed in this movie? And I mean where the song is the focus of the scene, so this scene where Arthur and Harley are at the theater probably won't count. I figure the fact they got Lady Gaga means Harley's going to sing more than one song, and Arthur will sing one, at least, as a symbol of his madness freeing him. So the over-under on this is 3.5. Minus 110 either way again. Alright, two more bets. First, will the media have a collective aneurysm about how toxic and dangerous this movie is? Minus 10,000 that they do, and I'm not even going to bother including a bet to the contrary. Lastly, Zazie Beetz, who played Arthur's neighbor and hallucinatory girlfriend in the first movie, is credited in the cast. Now, I inferred from last movie that Arthur killed her. So the question is, is her presence in this movie real, or will she just appear in flashbacks or another hallucination? I'll point out she's first billed in this as of now, and I'll set the odds that Sophie, that's her character's name, is actually in it at minus 200, and only as a flashback or hallucination at plus 170. So here's the bet slip. Comment below how you would split up 100 sauce bucks on these bets, and we'll see when it comes out who won. I'll include my own so you can copy and paste that to make the formatting easy. So long, have a wonderful day, I hope you'll subscribe so that we see you again soon.